are almost independent by themselves. There are pros and cons to the unitary system. The concentration of authority in unitary states may lead to the feeling among citizens that it is pointless to become active in local affairs, since all power radiates downward from the capital. How many of you are from out of town, out of Metro Manila? Will you raise your right hands, please? Either so far removed from community problems, and citizens too disenchanted to make their views known, wise policy making may prove difficult. On the other hand, the centralization of power in its economic resources and coordinate planning and development, its broad taxation powers make the task of financing social welfare legislation or LASA, legal part of LASA, an ecosystem, the tendency is to central trend. Furthermore, the Philippines is a presidential democracy and not a parliament. Our presidential democracy shows the separation of powers between the executive and the legislative branches. The chief hallmark of our system is that the president is not just a figurehead, but also a functioning head of government. By contrast, in a parliamentary system, the head of state is an office distinct from the head of government, who is usually called prime minister, premier, or chancellor. In that system, the prime minister is the important figure. The parliamentary system, ang binoboto nila yung kanila members of parliament, para congressmen, they vote for the members of parliament. Pagkatapos, itong mga members of parliament or MPs, they will hold an election among themselves and vote for their leader, who is called the Prime Minister. And then the Prime Minister forms a cabinet of ministers, but the ministers come from the MPs. So there is no separation of powers. Be responsible to Congress. The President is elected on his own and chooses department secretaries from outside the ranks of Congress. Our country takes great pride in the separation of powers, also known as the famous system of checks and balances. Sa parliamentary system, wala sila ng separation of powers because both the legislative and the executive are fused together. Isn't that so? But in a presidential form of government, there is separation of powers into legislative, executive, and judicial. Ano sa tingin ninyo ang dahilan kung bakit mas gusto natin at sa tingin natin ay kailangan ang separation of powers? Why do we have to separate powers? Have you ever heard of the maxim, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely? So now, what is the reason why we want to have three branches or departments in government? And then, they check and balance each other. Why? Yes? Yes, go ahead and stand up. Go ahead. I'm looking at you. Yes, the <laughs> young woman in the uh, light colored gloves. Why? Controlling power or limiting power, in other words, avoiding corruption. Because power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts. So, if you make one branch of government hold absolute power, that branch will become absolutely corrupt. Kasi wala siyang checks and balances. It's not afraid of anybody. That's why we divide our government into three so that each one of them can watch each other. And they balance each other. Give me an example of the way our system of checks and balances works. The veto power. Yes? The veto power. The veto power, that is correct. In what way? But the president refuses to sign the bills passed by Congress. That is right, yes. Congress passes laws, that is its main function, but the president has the power to veto the law. That is the product of Congress. But it does not stop there. The law can be, the bill can be returned to the Congress and Congress can override a presidential veto. Kaya sila checks and balances, no? Or even if the president has signed the bill into law, one citizen can bring a case in court and the Supreme Court has the power to declare that law unconstitutional and therefore invalid. So we have a system of checks and balances so that power will be, will be distributed among the three branches and in that way we hope our government will be less corrupt because the more power you give to one person or one group, 
the more corruption there will be. Parliamentary systems have certain difficulties. First, because members of parliament generally obey their party leaders, votes in parliament can be closely predicted. This means European parliaments are less important than the Philippine Congress, where senators often oppose the president, even if he is of their own party. Second, parliamentary democracies often have many parties, with no single party controlling a majority of seats in parliament. This means the largest party must form a coalition in the smaller parties in order to command more than half the seats. The role of Congress. The main what is the main purpose of Congress? Then Congress to legislate laws. Yes, of course, to pass laws. The main purpose of Congress is to formulate the laws that govern our society. Ideally, Congress should initiate laws, propose constitutional amendments, ratify treaties, control tax revenues, and act as a check on the other branches of government. How does a bill become a law? Very simple. The first step is to draft and then introduce the bill. When senators or representatives want to propose a bill of their own, their staff usually do the actual writing, or you just go to the law books of other countries and copy their laws. <laughs> copy them from the book, copy them from the internet. Formal introduction of a bill in the Senate begins when the proposal is registered with the Secretary of the Senate and referred to the appropriate committee. Oh, it's in ulat mo na yung bill mo, dahil mo to the Secretary of the Senate, whom you will see this afternoon standing just a little below the Senate President. We find more on. Pagkatapos, at the next session of the Senate, the President, the Senate President, will say, call the bills. So the Senate Secretary will stand and say, here is a bill introduced by Senator Santiago for store owners to give exact change. And the Senate President will say, I refer that bill to the committee on, what committee? Trade and Industry. Then it is given to the chairman of that committee, and then he will study that bill, he will conduct a public hearing, he will call experts, he will call young people if necessary, and listen to everybody who has anything to say for and against the bill. And then, if the committee thinks the bill is good, then the chairman of the committee will go back to the plenary session. Plenary session means all the 24 senators are present. Like every afternoon we have a plenary session because all of us will be present there. And so, if the committee recommends that the bill should be approved, the chairman of the committee will deliver a so-called sponsorship speech. He sponsors the bill. He says, I think we should pass this bill for the following reasons. And then follows the Senate debate. When one after another, the senators will stand up and cross-examine the sponsor of the bill. Maybe your bill is not so good after all. Look at section two. I think it's, it does not treat people equally, or I think it is oppressive, things like those. That's the Senate debate. After the Senate debate, when they amend the bill, I think we can improve this bill. Let's change this word in this particular section. So they debate, they amend, they revise. Finally, they vote. If they vote in favor of the bill,